We're now going to begin a series of talks about how the host defends itself against a hostile environment. And this is actually a broader issue than just having an immune system that defends against parasites and pathogens. We're going to talk about the nature of environmental hostility, its patterns in space and time. A central theme is going to be that all defenses have costs. So every time a defense is mounted, it actually opens a vulnerability as well. Defenses may allow disease either through failure to protect or through excessive costs, and the costs might be evolutionarily acceptable, but they might be completely unacceptable to patients and doctors. So that is the overarching framework. In some cases, the cost of defense can be the main cause of disease symptoms, and we will see some dramatic examples of that. So, first, what is the nature of a hostile environment? Well, the environment consists of many factors, and they can affect reproductive success and health, either directly or indirectly. Some of them are universal, things like food, temperature, and pathogens are experienced by all organisms but others are quite specific to particular organisms. So particular predators, low oxygen is only important for some, things like that. Now, the natural environment is almost never perfect. There's always something in it that is actually or potentially a threat. Some of those threats can actually kill the host. These hostile factors can be there all the time, or they could be there, say, only seasonally, or only during the day, or only at night, things like that. And those that have enough impact on fitness are going to lead to the evolution of defense mechanisms. Some of these are universal and others are species specific. So if we look across all living things, we actually see certain core defense mechanisms that are broadly shared and others that are only present in certain species. Just to illustrate this, uh, here are some of the elements of a hostile environment. Here is the smallpox pathogen, hookworms on intestinal mucosa, predators. I have seen lions hunting in Mikumi National Park from a Land Rover. They were about 20 meters away from me and <laughs> they were extremely threatening. I could hardly see them slipping through the grass. If I had been out of the car, I would have been dinner. And then there are the hostile physical environmental factors, things like cold. All of these lead to the evolution of defense mechanisms. Now, those mechanisms have costs. They're trading off with something. The mechanisms that evolve to protect organisms include things like defenses against starvation, infections, predators, and hostile environments will select maintenance programs, such as the immune system, that will promote survival at the expense of growth and reproduction, but only up to a point. There will come a point where, in fact, it's better to invest in reproducing than in defending. Specialized defenses are very specific maintenance programs, and they are trading off with growth and reproduction, and in general, with normal physiological function. So defenses always operate at a cost. Now, because some defenses are actually essential for reproductive success, they have very large benefits, the acceptable cost of such a defense can be very large. Large benefits permit large costs. So if something goes haywire and those costs are revealed, you can have a very serious situation. Just to illustrate this, and actually to raise an interesting point, a cough is a defense mechanism. However, it is transmitting a cost, and that cost is being externalized. Other people are getting sick. So the cough helps the patient to get toxins and uh, pathogens out of the respiratory tract, but it then creates a possibility for horizontal transmission. This is a tension that arises throughout medicine. What may be good for the patient may be bad for the population. Now, defenses have uh, a certain kind of cost structure. There are several different types. 
The evolutionary costs are measured in the long term at the population level as a negative genetic covariance. So, for example, the immune system might be genetically co-varying with uh, something like reproduction. And we can see that when we manipulate the immune system with hormones. Maintenance costs include things like defensive organs and tissues. They're quite familiar, but they are important in the general context. So our skin is really our first line of defense against invasion by most pathogens, as is our, our mucosa, our, our lung epithelium and our intestinal epithelium. The skull, the rib cage, and all such organs are protecting key tissues uh, from injury and so forth. So those are things that need to be maintained, and it's rather perhaps uh, obvious, but they are nevertheless significant costs. Then there are deployment costs. Those are things like energy and physiological costs that can interfere with other functions. You may have noticed how tired you get when you get sick. That's a reallocation of deployment. There are some mechanisms, uh, for example, the immune costs that the immune, the immune responses that it generate tissue damage uh, through inflammation, and those can amount to serious illnesses in themselves. Now, there are two ways that defense mechanisms can lead to disease. Either they fail to protect, so they just break down, or their costs are excessive. Let's take a look at that statement. Defense mechanisms can lead to disease in two ways, either fail to protect, or costs can be excessive. Whether they are excessive depends on the priorities of defense. For example, protecting from infection versus the cost of defense, what functions are being served. For example, respiration. A cost that is acceptable in one environment could be excessive or could be completely detrimental in another one. And the environmental change that occurs can shift the cost-benefit ratio. So when we think about something in the past, it might have been that a defense evolved in a situation where the cost-benefit ratio was such that it was a very good thing to have. But if that ratio shifts into the present, then we get what we call a mismatch to modernity. So the whole cost-benefit function is strongly influenced by the environment. Now, when do the costs become unacceptable? Well, they are unacceptable when they are excessive for patients and physicians. It might be a perfectly acceptable cost from an evolutionary perspective. If the gene is the unit of selection, and if the differential reproduction of genes is the focus of evolution, then it is perfectly understandable why the body would be allowed to deteriorate and die if thereby more copies of genes got into the next generation. That's perfectly acceptable from an evolutionary point of view, but it's completely unacceptable to a patient or a doctor. So costs that were historically acceptable at the population level can now be detrimental or excessive at the individual level. And examples include all cases of late life disease that are increased by antagonistic pleiotropic effects. So these are essentially all of the cases where a gene had a beneficial effect on reproduction early in life. It caused a cost that was only expressed late in life. That cost was never realized because people at that time were dying of infectious disease or in childbirth. But now those costs are expressed. And just to illustrate that, a newborn baby in a Japanese Buddhist cemetery. Birth and death are linked by exactly those kinds of costs. Now, when is it that a defense will actually cause a disease? The costs of defense, if they are expressed, can become disease symptoms. And that's particularly clear with infectious diseases. So the immune system, which really has two functions, one is to defend against pathogens and the other is to manage the mi microbiome, can actually become pathological. And it's the most common cause of symptoms during infections. Most of the symptoms, fever, anorexia, coughing, diarrhea, are either expressions of defenses or they reflect the cost of defenses. 
So, for example, fever is something which can actually cause bacteria to be better dealt with by the immune system. And unless it's excessive, it can actually be a good thing and lead to a more rapid recovery. And diarrhea or something like that is not only a problem in that it uh, causes a great loss of water and people can actually die from being dehydrated if they have cholera, but it is also a way of getting toxins out of the body. So you can see that most defense mechanisms are a mixture of costs and benefits. What happens if you treat a symptom that is in fact a defense? If you block a symptom that's a defense, you can alleviate suffering, but it also interferes with the whole process of healing. If the costs are excessive, then blocking the symptoms can relieve suffering without negative consequences. And this is where it's important to understand mismatches and how cost-benefit relationships change as the environment changes. So if fever helps to reduce the duration of infection by a few days, it could reduce the chance of being eaten by a lion. In other words, you might be up on your feet and able to run fast more quickly. But if the risk of predation becomes zero in, say, a modern city, then the benefit is irrelevant and reducing the cost would be desired. So it's important to see how defense mechanisms are underlaid by a cost-benefit structure and how that cost-benefit structure changes as culture and the environment change. So the big question is, when is it safe to interfere with a symptom that's a defense that's involved in a trade-off? And that's something that has to be understood on a case-by-case -case basis. So to summarize, environmental hostility is something that is heterogeneous in space and time. Defenses have costs, and because they participate in trade-offs, tweaking defenses has consequences. Defenses allow disease either because they fail to protect or because their costs are excessive due to shifts in cost-benefit ratios. And costs may be evolutionarily acceptable at the population level, but they are unacceptable to patients and physicians at the individual level. The cost of defense can be the main cause of disease symptoms, and in upcoming lectures we will see some dramatic examples.